there are these three, to me, these three intimate acting scenes. There's when Charles dies and he has that scene where Edwin, well, I guess they meet each other and they have this really intimate right. scene. And then there's Simon and George before he meets Despair. And then of course the ending, which I want to talk specifically about that. And well, not the ending, but the stairwell moment. Yeah, I know what you mean. But I, I, I was thinking, I wonder if it's because Rich is an actor because it was so, it's so, to me, the, those scenes are just like top notch performances. And I would love to hear what it was like working with the actors on those moments in particular. Sure. On, yeah. And also like the fact that there are these established characters already that you're stepping into, like, well, you know what I'm trying to ask. <laughs> yeah, it, listen, it, it you it doesn't matter what show you're doing. You're usually working with people who are established. Unless you're directing the pilot, you're directing people who've already been playing the character. But the script is different. It's sure. a different story every time. So it's a new play. Even if it's a role they've been doing like Supernatural for 11 years when I come in, they still give a shit and it's still a new play. So yeah. you still have a responsibility to come in with ideas and to be able to transmit those ideas into a palatable format for an actor to absorb and either accept or reject. So, uh, you know, George and Jaden were unbelievably committed to their characters. They rehearsed their scenes at home. They would come in with a chart of an emotional arc they were thinking it should be. It was great. You're like, oh man. Well, cause then you're starting on the top floor yeah. you're not working an actor up from the basement you're like oh we're already here so sure. now we can talk about window dressing now we can talk about a, where the sofa goes now we can do detail work you know because you guys have done so much base layer stuff that we're we're sitting pretty um i do think my being an actor helps yeah because i speak the language and i understand the vulnerability of trying something fresh in front of 60 people and I, and I know that it doesn't matter how long you've played that character, that is, uh, that is a moment. That is a, that is a time in which you are putting yourself out there for scrutiny in a way that people who are not performers do not do. And so I am 100% engaged in that process with an actor. And when you have George and Jaden who are already committed and already emotionally available as performers and in it, then my job is to sculpt and to help create levels and create moments. And they trust me, you know, after, you know, I, I'm sure they didn't trust me day one, but after working with me for a couple of days, they're like, oh, this guy is not going to get in the way. This guy's an asset, not an asshole. Great. Yeah. You know, perfect. Because all I'm there is to make it awesome. All I'm there to do. I don't, you know, my motto is also, I don't, I obviously have a shot plan. But if all the cameras break down and we have to just set them on concrete blocks and hit record, if I get great performances out of those actors, we still have a great scene. If I have the coolest camera moves in the world, but actors who aren't engaged in the scene, I've got shit. Yeah. I've got nothing. It starts with the acting. It starts with the writing. It starts with the core elements of what the art is about. And then you use the camera to be creative and help tell your story. But the camera never comes first, man. Not, a, not on a rich space set. So that like I was focused on those guys and how to tell the story for those characters. And then we, I, I had a shot plan that went around that. So the whole thing, the whole idea of the scene in the barn and the attic when they meet we looked at a million places to shoot that. We talked about that scene nonstop. I drove Steve crazy because that was labeled as one scene. And I'd always say, it's seven scenes, Steve. This is seven scenes in one scene. And eventually he's like, I got it. I got it the 40th time you said it. It's seven scenes. But it, that's, I broke it into seven scenes. I broke it into, into which it had to be. It's not, I, that's not some genius stroke of mine. But how I did it was up to me. Uh, and so I use that light and I use transitions. I would use like the lamp comes down and as the lamp comes down, now I'm in a different phase. And as I go past the books, now I'm in a different phase. And as I go up to the window, now I pan down and I'm in a different phase. So I chopped up to keep it organic, but elegant, these sort of ways of transitioning between 
the scenes so that I could see their evolution as a as a as a friend duo, you know, throughout this uh, time they spent together in the attic. So their origin story was fully told in this very brief amount of time um, up to when uh, Jaden's character dies. And so it was awesome to have two actors who were that engaged and that prepared because you could do things like that. And they had these ideas, like, I think it's this, that, and the other. And I'm like, is it? Because here's the thought. And if they were so prepared and I was so prepared, our preparation would meet in the middle and they'd be like, oh, that's awesome. I'm like, you know, that's awesome. So bring that, you know, that little, like, noise you make at the end, like, oh, keep it. Like, let's go with that. You know, and we're going to do this, that, and the other, and then we're going to, I'm going to, that'll trigger the camera to move. And it just gave us this really lovely, organic, there's not a lot of coverage in that scene. If you go, if you go back and watch the sequence, it's not like I'm doing a lot of singles. And then I got them at the table. And I do a little covers there, but then I'm up to the window and down. And it's not, camera's not doing crazy stuff. It's about those boys and the acting. And then getting from moment to moment. Um, and they were, and they were, because they had done so much homework on the charting of that, of the course of that relationship, they were, very prepared for that and very uh engaged with my ideas and full of their own ideas and so it made for a great uh collaborative sequence uh that i think benefited from that also the scene with simon i mean it's very similar to me like oh this- yeah that was one of those ones though they added that scene so that scene that at one point that scene was in there but then it got way bigger because then he goes into in the middle of that scene he goes through the mirror and talks to despair because back out, like it just, there were so many elements of that that weren't there when we started working on the script. They added despair, and, you know, we did all this stuff with despair and it became really cool. And, it, you know, that's another one that is so, the actor who played Simon did a great job, but that's George, man. That's George just yeah. showing up with just, fucking home run swings you know him th- like watching george between lines is just gorgeous watch his actor to watch him as an actor hear listen and then respond like he's a great listening actor and so that when that when simon is like maybe i maybe i'm you know maybe i'm in hell because i'm gay is essentially what he's saying right he, he sort of says maybe this is the punishment i deserve right. and to watch and to watch george hear that and react it's just beautiful it's just so genuine you go wow as you're shooting it you're like oh man and so it just becomes something better than it. i mean it's it's what steve wanted it to be but not everybody can get you there. George right. can get you there. George can get you there. You know, George just delivered on that. And that, and that the actor played Simon was, was doing great and emotional and engaged. And, and that was a tough scene to shoot. That's a really weird little room. It's very emotional. You leave, you come back. So you've got to like, you're shooting it in one space and you have to, you know, pretend you're gone and, then you're back from the despair scene, even though we haven't shot it. And you know, it was, it was a lot. It was, it was a lot on George. And I worked him like a rented mule. We shot the shit out of that. We were all over that place because it was such a tiny room, and there's so many elements that need to be told. I had to come back the next day with the uh, stand-in actor and do all the bloody finger stuff. Like we didn't even get to that detail work that day. We did that later um, because I didn't want to waste time on that. Then I wanted to be sure we got the story. Yeah. Um, and uh and yeah man so it was it, you know george is just great at that and when he gets up and leaves you know he leaves and steve did this great thing in the script where he's like then the blue light comes up and you and he looks up and he starts to smile and you're like oh redemption you know but he doesn't you don't hang your hat on it right it's yeah. like once that kid sort of understands what he did wrong and accepts responsibility for it Steve lets him off the hook. Yeah. Yeah, it's a great Just moment. enough for us to go, oh my God, and then we're out. Yeah, you totally. see Simon's disposition change just enough. Yeah. And it's gorgeous. It's just gorgeous, you know? Yeah. Uh, such a well-written scene, but it's such a, such a gorgeous 
exchange of words from the two actors and, and mainly from George. Um, and that leads to the scene on the stairwell. 